Welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022 here in Bucharest, Romania, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Mr. Nigel Casimir, who is the Deputy Secretary General and Head of Regional Policy Development for the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Yes. Nigel, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Max. Perhaps we could start off by talking about the CTU, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the CTU and its role here at PP22. Right, okay. So, well, the CTU is, is our regional uh, intergovernmental organization in the Caribbean that um, assists our member governments with uh, policy development, capacity building, and so on in this area of telecommunications and ICT. Uh, the CTU has been around for 33 years. We were established in 1989. We have 20 member countries. Well, it's, it's countries and, and territories in the Caribbean. Um, 14 of which are independent states and six uh, overseas territories, five from Britain, one from uh, the Netherlands, actually, in terms of our, our membership. Uh, so we assist our, our member states with policy development, with capacity building, with project coordination, and also with representation at international organizations uh, where maybe they, don't, they might not necessarily have the resources to follow. So we would try to cover as many as possible and uh, report back to our members in terms of any items of specific interest or concern that, that, we, might, that, that we might pick up. So we attend CITEL meetings, uh, ITU meetings, as the case might be. So here at PP22, of course, this is a treaty-making conference, and we've... Um, We've been able to muster a historic number of our uh, CTU member states to be here present in person. Uh, of the 14 independent states, we managed to get as many as 13 here. Um, both, and of course, the special occasion was that for the first time, we actually had a Caribbean candidate for an ITU executive post. That was Mr. Stephen Barrow from the Bahamas. So one of our CTU member states actually had a candidate. So uh, that was a special incentive and it actually um, you know, greatly enhanced the, um, the, the participation from, from our region. Stephen, as we know, took a uh, silver medal, let's put it that way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, hopefully uh, uh, there are plenty of, th plenty of things for him to get his teeth stuck into um, over the coming years. Yes, I, I think it would. I think it, it's, it's also raised the profile of, of the Caribbean as well. And, um, I think that will stand us in good stead going forward. Let's talk about raising the profile of uh, Caribbean and uh, small island developing states. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see that uh, being able to be actioned in the best possible way through this forum? Well, certainly, about, ap apart from the, the election thing, of course, but of course, we are, we are now paying attention to some of the resolutions that are before the conference, right? And there, there are resolutions on items of of, of great interest to us, mostly related to development of our um, networks and services, right? Uh, with COVID in particular, every nation of the world has had an increased emphasis on digital transformation. So digital transformation is everywhere. People look, people see the value now in a practical way of um, using the technology to deliver services, it's governments, it's, co it's commerce, it's, it's, it's education, all of these things. So- And early warning systems. Early warning systems, emergency communications, and which of course is very important to us in the, in the Caribbean with um, our annual hurricane season and, and things like that. So it has allowed us to um, get our, more of our members involved with the actual policy, uh, the more, more of the policy development at an international level now uh, related to all of these areas. And, I, well, hopefully they will see the value of greater participation in fora like the ITU, right, where they can, you know, take a seat at the table with all the big boys and one country, one vote, um, basically represent their requirements, you know, and uh, make sure that uh, their needs are taken into account when any of these uh, global resolutions are being uh, made. And in terms of the 
people who are attending here, we're not just talking about member states, we're also talking about in industry and academia, right. etc. So how important are those conversations? Well, that's very important, actually. And I think ITU recognizes the value of, of having those sort of industry players beyond just the member states. Within the CTU as well, we, since 2003 or 2004, have also created membership categories, uh, non-state membership category, private sector members. Uh, we have special governmental type agencies. Uh, we, for example, now we have some regulators who are also me members of the CTU. So what we do in terms of our policy development in the Caribbean is we create fora where they can all come together and make appropriate inputs in, into the policies that, uh, that are recommended for our, our member states. And we do that in areas like uh, internet governance, um, spectrum management, um, some of the items he, before us here are internet related matters, you know, over top services and all these sorts of things. So um, in our recent ministers meeting uh, in the Caribbean, we dealt with two key areas as far as technical policy development were concerned. One was related to uh, regulatory harmonization in the Caribbean, and the other one was related to the management of over-the-top services. So this, this is the type of thing that, that the CTU does. We would get the relevant stakeholders together to create some coherent policies for, um, and, and ideally harmonized policies for our, our Caribbean area. We have an aspiration to create what we call a single ICT space in the Caribbean. Uh, the individual small member states don't have the market power that we would have if we all got together and created a big space. I mean, you've, you've seen it in, in Europe with the, with the European Union, for example. Um, so um, this, is a, this is an aspiration of ours and actually, I think with, with COVID, the effects of COVID as well, that has also given some extra impetus to making that happen. And what follow-ups do you anticipate here after this plenipotentiary conference? Right, well, we are following on resolutions related to uh, networks, de net networks development, internet-related uh, type stuff. Uh, there are even some related to spectrum management. So what these would do is uh, inform our own regional work. Next year, there is uh, WRC, the, the World Radio Communication Conference. So um, it will help to focus us in terms of making, uh, you know, cogent inputs at that, at that uh, WRC. And we do have experience, in fact, in, in recent experience within the last two WRCs, whereby the, the, the Caribbean participation has influenced the, the the course of, of the of negotiations at, um, at the, in fact, before and at, the, and at WRC. What would you say is the most challenging uh, and pressing issue currently facing your members at the moment? Is it uh, connectivity? Is it, uh, uh, is it investment? Is it infrastructure? Mm -hmm. We have fairly good infrastructure. Um, it, broadly, one would say it's connectivity. But it's not connectivity from the point of view necessarily of lack of infrastructure, but more affordability of infrastructure. So again, I talked about small markets. You find that um, with the smaller markets, you don't get the economies of scale that you would get in a, you know, if, if they were a bigger market. So you typically would find that the cost of our services are a bit higher than you would find, say, in the nearby US and, and Canada and those sorts of places. And part of it is related to the market size. So this is why uh, we are quite interested in harmonizing the Caribbean space so that um, we can get better uh, affordability and that would help drive further um, uh, penetration, further service penetration. So, I mean, I, I'm based in Trinidad and Tobago, and we are fairly large in the context of, of, of the Caribbean islands. And yes, you will find that services within Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, which is even bigger than, but bigger than, than Trinidad and Tobago, the, the cost of services in those two territories is, well, markedly lower than in some of the smaller islands. You know, uh, Barbados is relatively well developed, but they are, they are a lot smaller in terms of market. So as you go throughout the Caribbean, you'll find that um, the, 
the cost of services would vary and it, it becomes more and more of a, a problem, the this, this smaller the population that's involved. So what we're trying to do is, is harmonize this market as much as possible so that you wouldn't get uh, significant variations. Okay, now this is, this is my third plenipotentiary conference so I've been with at ITU, so it's once every four years. We were to sit in the studio here in four years' time. Yes. How would you hope the landscape uh, would look then? Well, I mentioned earlier on digital transformation. You know, I, I would hope that um, we would have a lot more online services going on. Um, I would want to show you my digital ID from, from uh, Trinidad and Tobago that, that I can use throughout the islands of the, of, of the Caribbean. I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily have to travel with a passport if I want to travel throughout the Caribbean because we've created this single ICT space and so on. You know, um, the next PP is probably going to be in Qatar, I think it is. Very they, close. Yes. I think, I think that's what... In 2026, what, indeed. Yeah, yes, in, in 2026, right. So, um, and while we have um, some, um, some connectivity services here, you know, that we're using now to talk to people back home and so on, you know, I would think that we'd have these things enhanced much faster, um, less congestion on, on networks and so on. So I, I think in, hopefully in, in four years' time, we'll find that we, we are a, a lot more digital. Let's very much hope so. <laughs> well, Nigel Kessler, thank you so much for joining us yes. in the studio today. It's thank been you. an absolute pleasure speaking to you. And hopefully we'll catch up a little bit uh, uh, sooner than in, in four years' time. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Th thanks for having me. Okay.